Hello, hello, hi. Uh, if you guys are here, please uh, leave a message so that I know who's here. Okay, wherever is here, I'm going to start and uh, I hope you have already downloaded and successfully installed DaVinci Resolve. Um, Studio is the paid version, so you should not be using that. Okay, so this is my desktop and I'm going to fire up DaVinci Resolve. Okay, so this is uh, the interface. For me, I see mine is a studio version, so it's a little different. Like it's taking a while. So make sure you've also downloaded my materials. We will be stepping through how to do the edit. Okay, so this is my the project uh, manager panel. So the first thing you need to do is to build a new project. For yours, it should be empty because it will be your first project. Oh, hi Alvin, hi Ian, and hi Norman. Studio version is not free, you need to pay, but I think you don't need it for a start. Okay, so before we do anything, I want to show you guys what I would like you all to be able to do by the end of this tutorial. So just take a look. Uh, don't worry, Ian, I will show later. Okay, so that is the final video that I would like you guys to achieve at the end of this uh, tutorial. And all the files which I have saved from the, that I recorded using the iPhone is in there. So I'll just show my desktop first, um, what the project looks like. I don't know if you, I think you can see my mouse. So let me orientate you first. The first thing when you enter Resolve, you must look at the bottom where the mouse is. And you can see that there are seven tabs. The extreme left is the media tab. This is where you import all the videos. I mean the raw clips. And then uh, the cut page is actually a rapid um, interface to trim your footage. So for example, I want to cut a certain part. I can just do it here and then I just drag it to the timeline. I don't use this personally because uh, I find it a bit 
um, uh, easier to do everything under the edit tab so generally after you import all the media that you want to use that you have shot like for your handphone or whatever camera your plan is to put it into the media doesn't matter if uh, you will use or not just mix it together then come to the edit tab where in this panel you will start to choose what you need so over here for example this shot I can this part I'm it's a very rough footage I'm not using it I only want it from here so I do an I and then I move it to here to the O so this is what I need and I just drag it down to the timeline so this is what uh, we'll go through in detail later fusion tab is basically uh, the place where you do all your fancy 3D moves so this is uh, quite advanced I will not be talking about this I know how to use it uh, but I'm also not very advanced yet now the color tab is the most amazing part of uh, Resolve um, after you learn how to use this you'll be very surprised um, like my image look at the center here I did something here now you see all is dark here but actually what I did was I selected this area where the shadows are to make it a bit brighter and this software is very clever it makes it very easy uh, we'll touch a little bit on it later Fairlight is the audio um, editing portion for Resolve this is also quite uh, complex uh, so if you need to do any noise cleaning or whatever you can do it here and deliver is basically when you finish everything and you want to render it into a final video so if you have a lot of uh, uh, small small clips you combine them together you have to render it um, into a single file so that you can share it on uh, social media or use it for your business um, but over here there are a lot of friendly tabs like YouTube, Vimeo, H.264, H.264 these are common stuff that you will use uh. so okay now yeah. let's go back and help everyone start your project so I hope everyone has the files so we do a new project so you can call it uh, CB days okay it's not that complicated Ian quite easy okay so first thing let's go to the media tab I will slow down a bit so that uh, you can catch up Oh, Xin Chao. All right, so now you have to open your uh, <coughs> Windows Explorer and I need to drag the materials. <coughs> so what I have here is I've collated everything except some of the sound effects. Here, but you, you should have all the sound effects so I need you to drag everything except the zip file and the instructions so just drag everything I'm going to control and unselect or command and unselect this file and drag it into the media tab 
So they say you have a different setting, just change first. Okay, so once it's in, uh, just give me a second. Uh. Okay, so all the files are in the middle pool now, at the bottom. I hope all of you guys can see it. You must be on the latest version of DaVinci Resolve 16.2. Um, for me, I'm on Windows. On 16.1, I, I have some issues. So I hope you guys have no problem. So let's say I double click and uh, I just hover the mouse over the icon that is a uh, hyperscrub. And this is uh, either, uh, it's basically a sound, either music or sound effects. And you press space bar and you move. All right. So this is the original sound. Okay. So I hope everyone has uh, imported the files. And then we'll go straight to the edit tab. Okay. One thing to mention, if you have multiple cameras, you always create bins for this, you see, I right click, new bin, and I can write uh, cam1, for example. So when I click on the master, I can move all the files into camera1, and uh, I can create another new tab, sound effects. And now I will move this and this into SFX and then I can have another bin for music so I just okay so this is everything that is in our project right now okay so we go to the edit tab when you're done I'll just hold on a bit while you guys do it Now, now we are in the edit tab, please uh, take a look at the top left panel. Uh, you should see all your media on the top left. So if I click Cam 1, I will see all the footage earlier. So this left window is a preview window and the right window is your final product whatever you're going to edit the sound effects and the music so now comes to the project uh, or sequence you have to create a sequence which is as the name goes you you everything goes in sequence whatever goes on the left comes first in time and then whatever is on the right comes later so the priority is left to right top to bottom so on top here if if you don't see your media pool you only see this you just click the media pool same here edit index double click to remove it oh they even have a free sound library that's nice I didn't know about this. I'll find out. Okay, so back to the media pool and make sure your effects tab are triggered below. Should be like this, my interface. So the first thing I want to do is to put the footage roughly. So you see this part 
there was a movement where I pan upwards. Okay, I want to start from here. I press the space bar to make it move. Same for Mac and uh, Windows. So I start again. Space bar. And then, okay. Stop. So now I press I. You notice where my mouse is, this area. There is a uh, uh, indication, a white line that tells me that uh, this is the in point. I stands for in point. So it's very easy to remember. Now then you space bar again, continue playing. Okay, I think here, I can show the traffic or not, depends, up to you. And I press the O. So right now, you have two icons here. If you just drag this, there will only be a image. If you just drag this, there will only be audio. But if you don't drag any of the buttons and just click, left click and drag the whole file, whole click, sorry, and that's it. And this is your timeline. To check, you can go to file, project settings, okay, or shift 9. Okay, now you can see the details of this setup. Okay, so you can see this is uh, 4K, but uh, we'll check later whether we shot in 4K or not. But um, what you need to take note is this the resolution and the frame rate. Uh, over here is 30. In Singapore, we our power is 50 hertz. So I would recommend to shoot always either in 25p or 24p or 50p. You can shoot in 60p but there will be situations where there may be some flickering. In daylight, outdoor is fine. You will not have any issues. Okay, I click cancel first. First, I want to check what's with this footage. So we go back to media. Uh, metadata. Okay, so it tells us on the right here that this is HD. 1920 times 1080. Okay, this is HD and the codec is H265 and this is 30 FPS. So we need to make a change to our project file. Go to project manager and then click HD. Then we are good. So the nice thing uh, about uh, H.265 is 10 bit. Uh, all you need to know for those non tech guys, uh, 10 bit is better than 8 bit for color. Okay, then you just save. And now we are good. This is live. The YouTube, everyone in YouTube is watching you. Okay, okay so now I have put this here. And I will play to see if I like this. Oh. If I don't like what I've trimmed earlier, I can still click, left click and drag. Notice how I did it. When you hover the mouse, you'll see two things. One is this and one is this action. So when you see this icon, you just... Uh, click and you can move it. This is similar as well. Uh -huh. uh, what 
Okay, so now this is done. I decide to. You notice on the left window, now you have a timeline. Now this, I don't want this timeline to be here. I want to move it to the master. So let's just drag it to the master. Now it disappeared, right? Because when you click master, then you see this. And I don't like this name. I click on it and click uh, at this timeline word. And I rename it to CV days. Okay, I hope you guys are following. If you have a uh, problem, just please uh, type in the chat. Okay, by now you should have had this already. Hey, Papa, lock a name. Can I see? Okay. Okay, now you come here. Uh, this is the next shot I like to put in. So it's shaky anyway, so I don't care. I just roughly, roughly I and O. And just drag and a pen at the back. And then the next shot will be this gimbal shot. This was done with uh, Ziyun M2. Okay, so you can see this shot I did. I, I, I had a problem, so I redo. Okay, so when I started moving, was then the movement was good, so I I spacebar oh, then just drag it down. Okay, now we're good. So now we have three clips, huh? My source is H two six four. Okay, Ian says his footage, but he can't see. Oh, you mean you guys can't see uh, what's on my screen? Can you see my resolve screen right now? <laughs> Can anybody see my screen and the footage is moving? <laughs> it should not be an issue actually. Okay, anyway, uh, I hope you guys can see. If you can't see, please let me know. Okay, once I move here, I continue, we'll continue putting all the shots that we want. Uh, okay, just like this. Okay, this shot was a bit of a moving shot as well. So, okay, stop. And drag. And now the last shot. I uh, you just downloaded the WG user but I can see yourself. Oh looks like a window problem. Sorry your Mac OS issue. Ooh, a bit tough. Never mind. Just uh, Ian you can try with your own source later. But you just see how I am using the interface. Okay, so for the rest of you, I hope you can see what I'm seeing. So now I have a few clips combined together. And you can see it's from left to right. Okay, so whatever is on the left here, whatever you put in front comes first. Now let's say I screwed up and I forgot to put that shot. So don't worry, all I need to do is to come here and I've already marked my in and out. I left click and I drag to the right window. You can see a dialog popping up with several options. Uh, I only like to use insert or replace or fit to fill. Even place on top is very useful. Uh, the place on top is if you are doing a, a talk. Uh, interview and you want to add a b-roll on top then this will be very helpful so right now I'll go to insert and please observe what happens to the timeline the orange cursor boom this comes right in front and they, they push everything behind very nice right 
and the other nice thing is if you find that this ending is a bit weird but because of the music and you want to traditionally you want to do this you roll here and then you move back and you go down but in resolve you just have to put it right in the middle and drag you're done so you can do this this is the max because the the the, the start of the second clip so roughly like this okay so now we are we have a decent looking timeline huh? okay I see yeah Okay, so now the next step I would add music. So the music is usually the lowest track. And I already plan to do some sound design. So sound design means I want to put folly effects. I want to put like birds chirping, uh, traffic sound, or whatever. So on my window, you can see now I'm going to the music tab. And you click and drag. Now you drag it to the lowest, make sure it's one track gap, okay, and then now I play the song, space bar, but there's a problem, the problem is, is my original clip sound is so noisy, so you have to make a choice whether you want to keep it or turn it off. So for me, I'm going to turn it off totally. So go down to the timeline again. And on the left, you see this M. M means mute. Mute setting now. So I press mute. And I'm going to mute my music as well. When I space bar now, no sound. When I unmute, okay, the audio come. So, but sometimes you... I have a dialogue, somebody's talking, and you want to uh, do some work on the sound. What you need to do is you click the solo button, S. You will only hear this, because even though the bottom is not muted, you only hear that. Okay, well, you, even if the mute button is on, uh, when you press that, there's no sound. Uh. So when you unsolo, then you can hear the sound again. Okay, so we'll have to trim the audio later. But uh, now we are looking not bad. Okay, but it's very abrupt, right? It starts like this. So maybe we should uh, do a fade. And how do we do a fade in Resolve? It's so easy. I'm going to increase this size so you can see better. This audio you are not using, so I'm going to collapse it. You see when I hover my mouse over the click, I see this white cursor on both ends. And all I need to do is move the cursor there, and you see how my mouse change from this to this. And I click, it becomes red, and I drag. I see 15 seconds-ish. I let go. Now I press home, space bar. Oi, now it has become a fade. But it's a bit fast, right? So I want to drag it longer. La, to one, almost one second ish. Okay, home again. That's not bad, right? It, it, it goes with the song. Individually milk clips, yes, but uh, there are a few ways to do. Uh, there's a question by Ian. When you want to individually milk a clip, means you don't unmute this whole clip. Let's say I want to mute this clip. You see a little faint arrow line. You see when you hover here, this the two cursor arrows come. Click and drag down. Minus 100 dB, 
Then there's no sound. We we'll solo this. No sound. Okay. Then to if you screw it up, you want to redo. Just move to the right inspector panel. Undo. Which the other way to make this mute is also to select the clip. Then on the top right, under the audio, just move the volume, clip volume. That's it. Now it's muted. So I'm not going to mute the whole track again. And we're good. So you see all this, you can drag it and uh, do a lot of... Oh, then I forgot to introduce more of the windows. So, uh, I just take a short detour first. Huh? A recap. The top right is the media pool. Everything that you want to edit are here. Your, your resources. Huh? And this is your preview window where you can make small adjustments before you drag it to the timeline. This is the output window. And this is everything that is going to come up in your final edit. Now, the right here is your inspector. You can go to metadata as well. Ah, yes. So when you click on this, you can see time code. Ah, okay. You can see the media details. This is HD and blah, blah, 44 by 1 kilohertz. And the mixer is basically to see the audio. Lah. And you can, this is the smallest. And you notice there are three tracks because I have one, two, and three here. Even two is empty, it's still there. But that two has a purpose later on. So normally I like to see the timeline uh, as long as I can because it helps. Okay, now. We go back uh, on the bottom left is the effects panel. Uh, unfortunately, you need to memorize a lot of stuff, but you will get it over time. But the word FX actually means uh, effects, E F F E C T S. Okay, so there's audio effects, there's open effects, which are plugins you can import, you can buy some stuff here and there and plug it in. So, transition is Let's say this two. I don't like the way they. I don't want a straight cut. This is called a straight cut. Okay, I don't like a straight cut. I want a cross dissolve. Okay, so now this is a cross dissolve. Oh, I want it deep to white, like a flash dissolve. And I can also control the duration by dragging. Boom. Okay, if I don't like it, I just click. Oh, don't, don't click the wrong thing. Eh? Okay, now I'm going to expand the clip because I can't select it properly. You can either use this icon here, this is a plus, or these are all have different effects. Full extend zoom, detail zoom, so it makes it big. And then this is just a really major zoom in. So now I click on this transition. Press delete, it's gone. Okay, so you can try all these different. Uh, some of them are quite cheesy, la. some of them look quite cool. La. So, like this one, you know, like that looks very cheesy, right? Because it's very slow. So, if I make it shorter, you. Tuk. But this is not still very ugly, la, because it's very mechanical. So, for me, I always like to zoom using holding the alt button i don't know what is it on the mac uh, but you just press the press and hold the alt button and scroll the mouse and you can expand and uh, contract the timeline so i'm gonna delete this okay so just scroll down on the left effects window there is a lot of stuff here okay. I have uh, some parking, so I have this like a glitch transition. But it's very difficult to, depending on your, the power of your computer, la, whether you can handle. Okay, so now we are, what we're going to do is we try to 
trim our track to follow the sync of the music. So, so we're gonna listen, ah. Uh. Okay. Okay, I didn't like that, so I could move this. I could just move it. Hang on, uh. Here. But then I lost part of this. So you can also do this. When I click this icon, um, I can move it to the part where it started. Okay. Okay. I always go to this uh, selection mode when you're moving. Otherwise, you might uh, screw up the whole thing. Okay. And then when you click here, nothing happens, right? Because your mouse needs to be on the time. Then you can move the cursor. So six bar. Okay, I like the ending here. I like the where the sound is. Then I just drag and pull the other. Oh, I think I had one more shot somewhere. There you go. Aha, I miss. Oh, what happened? Strange. Why is this not? Oh, something wrong with my resolve, huh? Ah, okay. Yeah, it's a bit slow. So, so you see, this is another uh, shot where you need to trim. Okay. Uh, okay, here is good. Roughly here, okay. Normally, I will look at the waveform here. You see, this is where the beat. You can see there's a jump. Just pull it back, then it's quite accurate. So now I decide that I want to finish off with the last clip. Okay, and then there's a big gap here, right? The e conventional way is to click and drag. The other way is to click here, the space, and press delete, and then you will stick to the last clip, okay? <coughs> okay, then if you want to move between clips, when you click on this, you press up and down, you also move between clips. When you press arrow, it's just one frame. When you hold the control, sorry, shift, then it moves by uh, one second, one second. Okay, these are all shortcut keys. Are very difficult to memorize, but uh, as you start using it, you will get used to it. Okay, I think the audio is a bit loud, so I'm gonna take it down a little. I come to the inspector on the top right, uh, minus 6. For audio, let's say like Norman, you want to introduce your product or Elvin. So you want to have this as a background music. I will always recommend a minimum of minus 16 so that your voice will come up if it's, it's between minus 16 to minus 18. Okay, this is a magic number. Uh, for for now, it's just because I want you guys to hear me talk better, so I'll do minus 12. So now you can hear me much better, right? Okay, I want to end with uh, fade here, so i just do the drag again. Okay, now the audio. How do I edit the audio? Uh, I've learned that we don't uh, get
controlled by the limited by your audio. Always edit to your content. So what I'll do is I will watch that the story flow is okay, and I'll force the the audio to fit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find the end of this song. Okay, this end part. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, I choose this part. So what I'm gonna do? So I'm gonna cut. Okay, you see this icon here, the blade. Edit. There's a B mod. You can press the B on your keyboard. Then your icon suddenly becomes from the selection tool. It becomes a blade, razor blade. Ah. So you just move to the point that you wanna cut and left click. Then press A. Then it goes back to your edit mode. So now what you do is I'm going to move this whole clip to the roughly to here and then I press delete. Okay, so roughly there you very abrupt right the sound. No problem. We go to audio transition on the left. There's a crossfit here. Just drag it to the middle. One, eight, Ta -da. Zero, three, two, two. So now we listen. Okay, still very around. Uh, you can pull the crossfade bigger. Uh, so this is not a good cut. Eh? Okay, it's a bit fast, so what I'll do is I'll remove this a little. So you see this icon again, when you put it at different places, different things happen. This is what you need. Okay, so roughly. Then I can pull this back and do a fade as well. Save. Okay. Okay, I hope everyone is following. Okay, now we, let's look at what we've done. Spacebar. Okay, roughly like this, huh? Of course, the music can be done better, lah. You you can uh, take your time to play with it. Okay, now I want to make a title for the end CB days. So go to the effects library, click on title, and this text is what you need. Just drag. Left click and drag and drop. So now I'm going to alternate and scroll. Oops, I didn't align it properly. I scroll it here. Then I'm going to fade it together. So now I see it's tighter, very ugly, right? So go to the inspector panel on top right. Type CD days. It's going to be CCD days soon. Okay, I don't like this font, so I just highlight the f words and then I click and then you see whatever crap fonts you have, you can choose here. There's a lot of settings you, that you can do. You can even uh, import the PSD file from Photoshop if you create something special. 
Okay, then here the position is something you can choose. And you can also do a shadow. Or you can do a stroke. Stroke means the outline. And the background is, I like this, because it's very convenient. I can choose the height. Now, you see this diamond here? This is a time uh, keyframe. So I can uh, make it move, change over time. And how does that work? Uh, let's say from the start. If this now this is the effect, yeah. Okay, so I can do a keyframe, meaning at time zero. Oh no, no, wait, wait. This is the final that you want, right? You come here, you click the keyframe for the width and the height, and then you come back to the start. You make it to zero. You notice these two keyframes became uh, orange. So now I come down here, I click this, I can see that, oh, actually I have two keyframes. So let's see the effect. Okay, if it's too fast, I just drag it here. Obviously, but then you can, you can, you know, you get the idea. Lah, huh? So, then I say, wow, Sean, I cock up. I don't like this. How? Ah? Okay, no problem. The I think the width is nice. It's the height that is weird. So I'm going to take this out. And then I click this arrow. So now I got nothing, you know, because, because I have no height. So I'm going to remove the keyframe and I'm just going to do 1.22. Let's see what it looks like. Okay. So this is what happened. Okay, because I now just only animate the the width. I didn't animate the height. So you look at the inspector panel here, look at this width here, the numbers are changing. So this is the concept of keyframing. There's a lot of stuff that you can do in Resolve with keyframing. So I hope I didn't overload you so far. Huh? Doesn't matter if you didn't animate that, but at this point of time, you should have a few clips, clips with the music. Okay, so now, for those of you, if your computer is stuttery, uh, it means that your computer is a bit old, you go, you can go to playback, use optimized media, select this, then go to proxy mode and select half resolution or quarter resolution. This will enable resolve to create uh, proxy files automatically. So this is very good if you are doing H.265, which is a heavily decoded, sorry, heavily encoded codec. Because they compress it a lot so that uh, it's smaller space. So as a result, when you play in a computer, is the, in the LRE is very tough because it needs to decode so that it can play back one stream. So one of your, your CPU core is dedicated to decode and then you want to edit. So normally I have to do a proxy in that situation. Uh. So what I like about Resolve over Premiere Pro which I use, Premiere Pro you must manually select and render them. So it's very tough. Okay. So now, uh, okay. After you are done, then okay. We we are still let outstanding one thing, which is the sound effects. So I wanted this bird sound for from here. <coughs> oh no, maybe from here. Nice. Okay.
okay so let me drag it down and see what it looks like oh my god it's so long so we'll go to the front so you notice here on this preview window if i move my mouse on the top it moves very fast when i move my mouse below i cannot i cannot move it okay so i press i space bar okay oh and then i just drag it okay now it's a bit short eh? but it's fine we can do the adjustment so just a trick you can introduce a sound first so so visually your mind is already tuned to know that what is the next scene gonna look like so you know this is too loud right you look here it's, it's, it's blowing it's clipping in the red so i will do a minus six and test it out not bad I don't know why this clip is so slow. Huh? Okay, then the breeze sound. Okay, not bad. I like this. So I, I and roughly here O. Just drag it down. So I want the breeze sound here. The breeze is a reverse problem. I cannot hear the sound. So I'm going to right click. Normalize audio. This is to pump up the sound. But you don't uh, overdo it. You do uh, like a minus 3, but in this case, I know it's minus 9. So it's good enough. But you know, if I just did that, it's very abrupt. So you have to do a fade here. Or, and you can always introduce another track. So highlight this with the mouse, hold alternate, press down arrow. Now I can move this to the track below and introduce the sound first. But I mean this part is a bit loud. So again we go to the uh, trim edit. And we start moving. You see, you can actually see the audio and roughly know whether it's going to be loud or not. Oh man, this is loud. So I press A or click this insert, this arrow. Right click again, normalize, and I'm going to bring it down to minus uh, 12. Oh, I think it's still too loud. Okay, too loud still. Eh? So this is a, a process. Uh, you just have to keep going oh man okay got it ready then uh, control s to save eh? So now let's say I'm happy with the sequence. But there's some small problems that we need to fix. Actually, I think this audio needs to be moved further. Oh man. this, compress this a bit. Now I'm going to expand this a little. So I'm like just trying to make the adjustments slowly la, so you all can do it at own pace. Ok, 
吃。Something like that, ah, just roughly. Okay, now we are done here. If anybody has any questions, please let me know. I'm just quickly gonna run through a color tab for some simple fix. Uh, I'm worried that you guys get overwhelmed today. Now below, I'm going to the color tab. Now in the color tab, the whole interface looks different now. Now resolve looks very difficult for beginners because of this page. Uh, you will find you will get very confused because of this note thing. The note is uh, something like layers. So this note, you do something to correct the color, and then you go to the you add a note, and then you do other corrections. So you just keep adding, and they are all non-destructive. So this is the input and this is the output. This is the concept of resolve. So now let me introduce, on the left is my LUT panel. It's for lookup table. Basically it's to give a flavor of the color of uh, your video. And uh, there are a lot you can purchase online. I've given a free one which I found online to you guys. Which is a code something. Ah, this one, this keton. Okay, can you see? I hover it. The color totally changed. It's too heavy for this script. Because the when we shoot in the iPhone, the footage is already very strong. I mean, it's already saturated in a sense. So you cannot do much uh, color correction. Okay, now first thing, this image. This is a very difficult shot, but I mean, I'm very impressed with iPhone. It's crazy. I mean, you see so much dynamic range. You can see the clouds. You can see the sun. And you can see, see details here. So what I want to do is, can I make this bottom a bit brighter? So what I'll do is, I go to this pen tool. And make sure this is at here, at the picker. Then I'll just click this. Then you see, how come nothing happened except here something happened, right? Go to here. And click. So now you can see what you selected. I go to the plus. Okay, I more or less selected a lot of everything at the bottom. Oh, so that last move was not good. I go to the minus and I take out I wanna take out some oh I have to redo again. Okay, roughly uh, like this uh. Now you go to the noise. You see what I'm doing? Okay. So you are actually telling resolve to pick the bottom, okay? Like this is very tough because it's a very difficult shot. So there is another way that you can do this. Is you go to the final shot, you go to the power window and click this. So I can just drag this. Hey guys, but y'all y'all don't need to do this uh, because this is very difficult. It's a, a bit advanced, but I just want to show you the power. So the, I'm feathering it. Uh. So if I bring this down to 25%, I'm at the bottom. Okay, roughly. Uh. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this tracking window. And I'm at the end frame, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna track backwards. See how resolve is tracking? It's madness. Man. This thing is so cool. Okay. 
so now the window has checked it right so this this note I'm going to make it brighter okay but you know it looks weird right there are some areas are looks very bright and some areas how come looks so dark okay but if you do just a gentle lift not too much just gentle so you can see the difference now right okay i know the reason it's screwed up because of this so if i undo this now i go back to the curve Can you see only the bottom is being affected? But this portion here is a bit rough. Can be a bit rough. And what you do is you do the feather. And bring this down a little. But uh, the main problem I had was because of this uh, building. So you can just, oh, you can actually add uh, some stuff, another point, but okay, I'm not going to do it because I just want to make our life easy, but I just want to show you guys how much difference it is, and hey, it applies throughout. You can't really tell, right? If I turn it off? Oh, no, no. I turn it on halfway. What? You're only halfway? Okay. Now you can see the improvement. It's quite amazing and pretty simple, right? Yes. What time will you be done? Okay, so this is basically the, the color tab is mainly for coloring. Okay, so you can do a lot of wonders like this sky. If you don't like this sky, you click on it, oh oops, because I select minus, and then I go and pick some other parts of the sky, okay, so I have almost a sky, and then just the noise, clean up a little, so now I say I want uh, my sky to be more blue, Amazing, right? How cool is this? Yeah, we're done. So I'm happy. So I go to deliver. And now this is your final output. How many? Oh, I forgot to show you guys something. Just one last thing. This is very useful. Go to this window. This clip is a bit shaky, so go to stabilizer and click stabilize, then you're done. You can stabilize anything, even like this guy, you can stabilize it very quick. It will crop in a little, but that's fine. Okay, so now I want to render. Now, most of us want to render to YouTube, just click this. And because my footage was in 1080, there's no point to render in 4K. So you can see there are different modes. So it's just 1080, and uh, give the file name, and browse the location where to render to. Let's say I want to render to my downloads. And then I add to render queue, start render, and that's it. Your video will be done. Okay, so I hope that was useful, that's all for today. Uh, it's a very basic crash course. And uh, anyway, you can know where to contact me if you need help. Uh, so I hope you had fun. Uh, any questions, please uh, contact me. Okay, uh, I think the stream is having some issues now. I don't know what's happening. Okay, that's all for today.